head to toe, debuting unique uniforms for today's 50th anniversary celebration. Kylie Blackston wins the opening tip against Asia Blackwell, and we're underway. Bears in all white with green trim coming off back-to-back -back Big 12 wins. Meanwhile, West Virginia looking to bounce back from a loss to Kansas State in overtime on the road. Quinterly missed. Kaya Watson tipped it out of bounds. Baylor ball on the near sideline. Starting five, Dariana Littlepage, Bugs, Jada Walker, Bella Fontleroy, Sarah Andrews, and Asia Blackwell. Just the third time this crew has started together this season. Bears are 2-0 and oh in the previous two games with this starting five. And this is Jada Walker who runs the point for the Bears. Gets it to Andrews. Passes tipped by Jordan Harrison and a successful steal for West Virginia. Meg, that's what this team does. Turnover West Virginia. Here's Bella Fontleroy with the easy bucket. 2 nothing Bears. We need to finish great defense. They're a great defensive team for the first 20-some seconds. you got to box out. Baylor is 16-1 when they're out-rebounding teams. Mountaineers pressed from start to finish in the previous game between these teams. Quinterly with the steal at midcourt and the lay-in. The Bears have committed four turnovers, including three in the last 75 seconds. Mountaineers doubling in the corner. Blackwell. Look at this defense from West Virginia. Eight on the shot clock. Open look for Fontleroy on the wing. Switch. They make that great skip pass across court after a trap, and you knock down a three. And Lauren Fields answer from the corner. That one strong. Rebound Kylie Blackston and an immediate tie-up. Arrow pointing the way of the Bears. Here's Fontleroy who's had the hot hand. Takes it to the basket and is rejected by Lauren Fields. Just because of the way that it's being called right now, they're going to stay aggressive. That's their game plan. You can't really change that too much. Andrews has to get it up. Shot clock was winding down. Offensive rebound. Asia Blackwell and she scores. Yeah, that's what Baylor does well. You have to finish your great defense. That's exactly what I said in the open, at least in the first quarter, until they get comfortable again. Great backdoor read from J.J. Quinterly. That's a terrific feed, too, from Lauren Fields. The 5'9", 50 year for West Virginia. Quinterly has all four of WVU's points. Baylor still in front by three. We're approaching that first timeout of the ball game, And it can't get here fast enough, as you said, Meg. Diggs with a rejection. Quinterly has it on the steal. Here's a chance for a run out. Quinterly all the way. Fighting for fourth place in the Big 12. Here's Van Geitenbeek off iron. Long rebound to Fontleroy. And Andrews has it under her control to slow things down. No, frantic pace is right, Nick. I mean, each team not backing down. That's such a great take there by Sarah Andrews, the point guard coming in. 24 years in a row that Baylor has won at least 20 games. That's the second longest streak in the nation. And how about the play of J.J. Quinterly, who's going to go to the free throw I'd love line. love to see that attack mode right now, especially with the games being played. Quinterly, the 82% free throw shooter, misses the chance for a three-point play. Here she is, 20 feet from the hoop, going inside against Diggs. That is a tough, tough finish from Dreyana Edwards. And Quinterly. Exactly as you mentioned, Nick. Quinterly's going to miss that. It's about converting, and West Virginia is so effective with their defense because when they do get a steal or a turnover, they're going to turn that into points, and that's what Baylor's doing right now. A great find. Both of these teams are playing like they are aware of each other's defensive mentality. All eight of West Virginia's points have come from J.J. Quinterly. Tabby Diggs nearly turned it over, and we've got a collision and a foul at midcourt. Both teams over the limit, so Jordan Harrison will shoot free throws for West Virginia. Here's Harrison, the sophomore from Oklahoma City. First free throw is good. And she becomes the first scorer for West Virginia, not named J.J. Quinterly. Harrison makes both. And it's a three-point ball game with about a minute to go in the opening quarter. Mountaineers finally able to press as they break a scoring drought. Still haven't hit a field goal in over two and a half minutes. Good hesitation by Van Geitenbeek. Open look for Little Page Bugs, who has yet to score. And a steal by Harrison. Nine Baylor turnovers. And Harrison will go back to the foul line. She is always there for a steal. She does a great job of recognizing that. 
Harrison, three for three, and got out-rebounded by Baylor in the previous meeting. But this team can definitely turn opponents over and often offsets that rebounding margin with the turnover margin. Yeah, exactly right. Here's another one right on cue, perhaps. Out of bounds, West Virginia ball, the effective full court press. They're a little flat, and they need to get up the lane so that those passes can't get through to the blocks on Baylor and get easy second-chance points in turn. Harrison has scored the last four for West Virginia from the foul line. No Quinterly on the court for WVU. Inside it, tears more up and in. And West Virginia leads. Good triangle action there from West Virginia against that Baylor zone. And another steal from WVU. Great passing to Jayla Hemingway. Three-point West Virginia lead, and another Baylor turnover. This one unforced on the near sideline. And yeah, yeah, Felder just completely frustrated there, just losing it off her own. She kind of hearing footsteps, waiting for someone to come up and pressure, and just loses it. But great active hands there by Lauren Fields, and Felder definitely in her own head after that one. Fields for three at the horn, no good. That's her thing. West Virginia loves. Second quarter about to begin. And the big stat, Meg Bulger, West Virginia, forcing 12 Baylor turnovers in the first quarter. All 16 points coming off those turnovers. That is the first bucket that does not come off a turnover. Tears of Moore has four. Yeah, that's unbelievable. But that's, you've got to be careful as the game goes later on. You're not going to keep relying on that. You've got to secure a half-court offense at some point. But, hey, why not? You I just trap by half-court. And a steal. Harrison with the finish. Make it 13 Baylor turnovers and 18 West Hated the threes that they've taken. Again, that back line there of West Virginia staying open for Baylor to go inside, outside. Big and now Quinterly, who leads West Virginia with eight points. Fresh legs back into the game. Quinterly almost got it to drop. Meanwhile, Dre Edwards checks out. She's now the third Bear with two fouls. Walker, Andrews, now Edwards, all with a pair of personals. Quinterly is 0 for 2 from the line. Percentage-wise, Meg, she's the sixth best free throw shooter in the Big 12 Conference. Going back to your thought a moment ago, though, it just looks like she acts in slow motion sometimes when she goes into the paint. Just so controlled. Bears got a fresh shot clock here. Harrison nearly poked it free from Andrews. Inside, Little Page bugs, and back outside to Walker. Great drive by Walker, but doesn't have the finish. Still loose. Watson almost had it, now Quinterly scoops it up. And here she comes, full head of steam, attacking the cup. Up and in, J.J. Quinterly, the first Mountaineer in double figures with 11. I'm still just taking a pause from watching J.J. <laughs> go the length of the floor. I mean, she made Walker kind of trip up at one, at one point here by half court. Then attacks, goes from the right to left side. The field goal by Quinterly ended a scoring drought for West Virginia. Here's Little Page Bugs gets to the free throw line. JJ Quinterly just putting on a clinic right there, going coast to coast. And I think that's a great time for a breather for her right there. Just kind of, <laughs> especially with the emotions of this game right now, sometimes you can feel a little bit more tired and gassed than you actually are because you know you're nervous, you're excited, there's a great crowd. That just amps your adrenaline up even more. So can't imagine she's going to get a break for long, but probably just before that next media timeout. Little Page Bugs with her first point from the free throw line. She hits both back to a five-point game. West Virginia took Kansas State to the limit. Just could not find an answer for Aoka Lee. Trying to get back in the win column here at home. Hemingway a three, short. Chance for a wide open run out here. Little Page Bugs does get her first field goal. Four points in a flourish for the sophomore from Oklahoma City. Back to a one possession game. West Virginia still leading by three. More traveled. Critical game here in the Big 12 Conference. Both of these teams still vying for a top four finish. And a coveted double bye at the Big 12 Tournament, which tips off March 7th in Kansas City. Blackwell might have had it tipped by Watson. She goes up again and scores at that time. One-point game. 
It's just tough underneath from Asia Blackwell. She's a great offensive rebounder for Baylor, probably their best. Very tough inside, but after that first shot, you don't turn in box, she's going to punish you. Blackwell averages eight boards per game. That's top five in the Big 12. Fields has yet to hit from three. Still has yet to hit. Moore tried to save it, somehow got it to Watson, though that probably was not the intention. Second chance here for WVU after the offensive board. Six on the shot clock. Quinterly a three. Money! That's West Virginia's first three-pointer, and of course it comes from Quinterly, who has 14. Yeah, she's just completely focused this game. You can see it. And, you know, sometimes you wonder after a game like Kansas State losing in overtime when you want that one on the road, another tough take inside from Edwards. But you wonder how a player is going to bounce back. Harrison going to attack this time. Kicks it to Fields. Harrison's wide open in the corner for three. Moore with the foul on the low block. If her arm wasn't caught inside with Edwards, the ball really bounced Tears of Moore's way. But unfortunately, she was prepared to kind of box out and go underneath the basket rather than let the ball fall where it did. Quinterly nearly took it away from Fauntleroy. Bears getting into their offensive set. Inside to Blackwell. And an immediate foul. She'll go to the line. It's Oreg Babu's first person. This time, though, she sent Blackwell to the free throw line. And Blackwell makes the first of two. Asia Blackwell, grad student and a transfer from Missouri. Her dad, Ernest, played football at Missouri and is a former Kansas City Chief. She goes one for two there. It's a one-point game. Mountaineers in possession with about a minute to go until halftime. Quinterly, full head of steam. She is so good, Meg. 16 points in the first half. Nobody right now can stop her when she puts it on the floor and goes to the rim right now from Baylor. She's just hesitating, as we mentioned, and doing a great job of their concern right now is drawing a foul as well. Van Geitenbeek slashes through the lane and kicks it back out. Here's Sarah Andrews. Has a screen from Little Page Bugs. Now in the corner to Van Geitenbeek. Good passing from Baylor to get it inside to Bugs, but she misses. Shot clock has gone dark. 20 seconds left. Mountaineers have a three-point lead and a chance to build on it here before the break. Will Quinterly try to do it herself? She's had the hot hand. In and out. Fields an open look for three. No good. Rebound. Watson can't finish it. But regardless, Mark Kellogg's squad leads Baylor. WVU has only had one women's soccer coach ever. Nikki Izzo Brown, Kitty Blakemore hired her, and the rest is history. All right, second half is underway, and Baylor has a quick bucket here from Sarah Andrews. She was blanked in the second quarter, but now has four points as it's back to a one-point game. Jordan Harrison turns it over immediately. That's her third turnover. And Baylor has a chance here to quickly take the lead on this possession. Jada Walker goes inside and kisses it off the glass, and Baylor does lead for the first time since the first quarter. And it's a quick timeout, immediate from Mark Kellogg, who is incensed on the far sideline. Just to open that paint up a little bit for West Virginia. Jordan Harrison, after the foul, forced to tie up to get possession back to the Mountaineers, who trail by one. Quinterly goes inside to Blackston. Basket and the foul. Yeah, they did she's get She's going to pick up another foul. Yeah, exactly. Got the foul on Walker, so she's going to come out of the game after picking up her third personal. Meanwhile, Blackston at the free throw line. Chance to convert the three-point play, and she does. Here's Sarah Andrews for Baylor. And now Fauntleroy trying to go inside. Kicking to Jana Van Geitenbeek. Now Andrews heaves a three and scores. It's a great job from Baylor working against that West Virginia zone, making the extra pass yet again from the corner in West Virginia too late to get out on the three-point line. 
Baylor back in front by a point. Quinterly puts West Virginia back in front. She has 18. Back inside to Asia Blackwell. Now outside, Van Geitenbeek a three. Dead on. Jana Van Geitenbeek's first basket comes from beyond the arc. Quinterly has scored more than half of West Virginia's points. Inside to tears of Moore. Great spin move, but can't get it to drop it. She'll go to the free throw line. Fouled by Blackwell, her second personal foul. Asia Blackwell is now going to have to take a seat on the bench, which she's been such a huge contributor on the glass for Baylor. That's another big loss here that we're seeing after you saw Kylie Blackson hit the bench for West Virginia. Tears of Moore made the first free throw. Chance to tie it here. Short. Fauntleroy rips it down emphatically. Baylor still up by a point. Baylor and West Virginia in a back and forth game. Bears looking to extend their winning streak to three games. West Virginia trying to bounce back from a loss to K-State. Great surge here in the third quarter from Jana Van Geitenbeek. She has five points. Not expecting to see her there. Harrison with the left. She's up to eight points now. Baylor's advantage back down to one. Two teams vying for a top four finish in the Big 12. Both teams feel they need this one. Van Geitenbeek slashing. Pass was tipped inside. Little Page Bugs up and in. An enthusiastic coach Kellogg shouting out orders from the West Virginia bench. Here's Quinterly. Inside, tiers of Moore. Four on the shot clock. Moore is short. Andrews wants to drive. She'll go to the foul line. Lauren Fields fouled her before that stoppage with her second personal. Andrews makes the first of two. Meg, want to go back to the three-point shooting. West Virginia is one for 11. Can you put your finger on why WVU has not shot it well from beyond the arc? No, they've definitely been in a slump from outside the last few games as another second chance opportunity right there. And off of a free throw, that's a gut punch. Mountaineers trying to get even with the Bears on the season as Quinterly now has 20 points. And if you are going to allow someone to go one-on-one -on -one and stand and watch, it might as well be J.J. Quinterly. Quinterly, 14th game with 20 or more this season. She's had 13 performances of 21 points or better, including the most recent outing against K-State, scoring 23 in that overtime loss. Van Geitenbeek's been hot and stays hot. Eight points in the third quarter, including a pair of threes. Harrison tries to answer quickly and scores. Yeah, Van Geitenbeek has been a huge difference maker coming off the bench there when there was some foul trouble here with Baylor. But as I mentioned, she's done a great job. She really works the offense well for Baylor when she's in the basketball game. Coaching staff has been thrilled with her play over the last five games or so. The senior who transferred from Stanford has really come into her own over the last few weeks. Meanwhile, Baylor gets an and one from Dre Edwards with a chance to extend the lead to eight with Edwards at the foul line. 79% free throw shooter on the season. Swish. Today, Baylor has been exceptional in this third quarter. Quinterly traveled. Now Walker and now Van Geitenbeek. Five to shoot. Edwards, long two. In and out. Mountaineers need a bucket here. Quinterly forces the issue and scores. J.J. Quinterly over 21 points for the 14th time in 27 starts this season. She has been West Virginia's most effective offensive weapon. 30 ticks left and a two-possession lead for Baylor in this critical Big 12 contest. Van Geitenbeek somehow got it to Little Page Bugs, who puts it in. Eight points for Dariana Little Page Bugs, the preseason All Big 12 honoree. Lead is back to eight for Baylor. Huge final possession here for West Virginia. Fields, a three, no good. 
Mountaineers love to go to Lauren Fields in these types of situations. Instead, Quinterly tries to score it. And we've got a whistle and a stoppage. No, nope, we've got the end of the third quarter. Referees are going to wave this off against this vaunted West Virginia defense going 10 for 14 from the field in the third quarter to turn a three-point halftime deficit into an eight-point cushion as the fourth quarter begins. This is Jada Walker for Baylor. Bears have a chance to push it to double digits for the first time in this game. Dre Edwards had it poked free. Possession stays with Baylor. Her team fighting for a top four finish and a double bye in the Big 12 tournament. Only way that can happen is with a win today against WVU. And right now the Bears have a double digit lead for the first time in the game after the shot from the foul line by Walker. Yeah, Baylor offensively right now getting whatever they want, just moving the ball nicely against West Virginia, and here they are with the steal. Getting what they want in transition to Walker, back-to-back -back baskets. And the lead is 12 for the visiting Bears. Jada Walker's been tough all game, so active, forcing West Virginia into this timeout now again. Last time these teams met, Baylor held West Virginia to one of its lowest point totals of the season as the Bears won 65-58. Five on the shot clock. Hemingway tries to score it, but can't. Tipped around, and eventually falls to Harrison. Second chance for WVU. Here's Quinterly. No good. Nothing falling for West Virginia. Third chance goes in from Jayla Hemingway. And Jayla Hemingway in this game can be a big difference maker. So you're going to get a traveling call right there again with Hemingway, but she can be a difference maker. That's what you need right now. You can't go in there soft. It's too aggressive. Baylor's defense is too good. And Harrison, West Virginia in the first half, turned turnovers into points consistently. That has not been the case in the second half. Third and fourth quarter, you got to find points elsewhere. So West Virginia, I think they need to do a, a better job of, number one, maybe hitting a shot or two from the outside to start, but stay aggressive and get to the free throw line. Find, you got to find some point and generate some offense somewhere else. Four unanswered points for West Virginia. And the Mountaineers get another stop. Ba Baylor able to get it across the timeline on this possession. Going inside to Blackwell. Rejected and turned away by Hemingway. Here's Harrison on the other end. What a scoop. Beautiful take from Harrison. And again, that play started with the defense of Jayla Hemingway. Our action resumes with under eight minutes to go in the game. And Baylor leading by six. It was a 12-point lead just seconds ago. A 6-0 run for West Virginia over the last 40 seconds. West Virginia wants to speed Baylor up. Baylor wants to be methodical on offense. Bears get a bucket there from Andrews, who challenges Arik Babu and scores over her. Back to an 8-point Baylor lead. Harrison almost lost it. Gets it to Quinterly, who has a game-high 22. No way. They've given that to Fauntleroy. That's incredible, Meg. And it couldn't have been called later. I had a feeling it was going to get... It was just such a... Re the reaction, I think Fauntleroy even knows it, too. She kind of gave a little smirk. She was playing right into that Quinterly, absolutely, <laughs> not even a push-off. I mean, That's it's absurd. comical, Meg. It's and comical. That was very, very late. Fauntleroy six foot, Quinterly's five eight. Fauntleroy looked like she had just gotten hit by the hardest hitting linebacker in the Big Twelve, not the five eight guard Quinterly. And then Harrison is whistled for a foul at the timeline. Do you fall apart and blame the refs and play victim, or do you use that momentum, use that energy to keep battling, play, you know, uh, know you're coming from behind and stay aggressive? That would have been a killer bucket if Andrews could have put it in, but instead West Virginia gets the rebound. Harrison kicking to Hemingway for three. Got it! Back to a five-point lead for Baylor. Jayla Hemingway has seven, including five in the fourth quarter. Big contributions for the fifth year from Collierville, Tennessee. Little Page Bucks kicks to Van Geitenbeek. In and out. 
and a chance to bring it back to a one possession game. The home crowd is behind the Mountaineers. Can Hemingway go back to back? What do you think about the shot selection there, Meg? I would take it. And, and I mean, of course, <laughs> I would have taken it. 43% career three-point shooter, kinda, you're pulling the trigger. I, I kind of think, in a way, Jalen Hemingway needs to know that one was a good three. This one, I need to kind of move the ball around. Little paint bugs at the free throw line. This is the first. By the way, it was Quinterly who committed the foul to send Little paint bucks to the line. Van Geitenbeek to the bench, replaced by Jada Walker. By the way, foul trouble for West Virginia. Quinterly, three fouls, under 5.30 to go. Here's Tears of Moore. Gonna attack. Can't score it off the glass, but she'll go to the charity stripe. This game has kind of had a similar feel. Second free throw is good from Tears of Moore. She now has six points. And to your point, Meg, West Virginia has turned it over 17 times against Baylor. It's very uncharacteristic for West Virginia, a team that forces it, uh, but very rarely turns the ball over. They're very secure with the basketball, but you have to give Baylor credit to their defensively. Mismatch down low, and Asia Blackwell scores past Jordan Harrison. Harrison attacking the cup. Can't score it. Here's Andrews. She's fat. Maybe a little bit shaken up, too. Went right underneath the basket. Into those boards. No contact. Two West Virginia players already back. Eric Bogbu and Harrison. Nothing flagrant or dirty about that play. She's one for two today from the strike. We've seen this before in a free throw. You better box out Asia Blackwell. Second foul shot is good. Mountaineers had it cut down to five a few moments ago. It's now a three possession game. Harrison's pass is taken away. That's West Virginia's 18th turnover. Mountaineers just plus one in turnover margin. And Quinterly has fouled Asia Blackwell. That's the 15th foul on West Virginia and fourth personal on J.J. Quinterly. I would be looking, can you call out the pick? I think maybe she's saying get, call out the pick. That's just a textbook. I said it's really hard, good screen. And I knocked over the player who didn't see the pick coming. That's, what kind of foul is that? <laughs> understand that. I thought that was just a clean pick. Mountaineers get possession here after Blackwell goes one for two. By the way, she's in double figures now with ten. Quinterly slashing through the lane and scoring with the left. Someone's going to have to set up, set, uh, step up and hit a big shot from the outside. Walker attacking, kicking the little page bugs. A lot of contact. Now the Mountaineers have gotten into a bit of foul trouble over the fouling limit, so it's free throws the rest of the way for Nikki Collins' team. You have to stay mentally tough. Keep that mindset. You cannot allow something that's out of your control. The rest aren't in your control. You're not going to go over and talk to them, and it's going to suddenly change. You have to stay mentally tough against that and figure out the things that you can't control, which starts here on the offensive end. Little Page Bucks, the third Baylor player in double figures. She now has 11 to match her season average. Quinterly trying to work off screens from Arik Babu. Gets inside and is fouled on the way up. Where well, she's just one for three today. Make it two for four as she nets her 25th point. And the Baylor lead is now back to eight. Walker nearly dribbled into a double team. Now Fauntleroy goes baseline. Offensive foul. Under 2.30 to go. West Virginia trails by eight. Mountaineers have not had success from beyond the arc. Here's Hemingway on the wing. Seven to shoot. She has to kick it to Quinterly. Three on the shot clock. Quinterly, mid-range jumper is good. Two possession game. That's just unbelievable to have a player like that. You're, you're searching for offense right now. They kick it back out and you don't have anyone. West Virginia is going to get the turnover. 
got to find a way to generate some offense. You know, if it's Quinterly, so be it. But you got to be smart about this. And, and they took Jada Walker off of Quinterly, which was a smart move from Baylor. Quinterly takes it to the mid-range, nearly threw it away, trying to get it to Harrison. Good defense by Walker. Harrison with her left. Got it. Great little hesitation step by Harrison. And another turnover. West Virginia has come alive, backed by this blackout crowd at the Coliseum. Got to go to the basket again, right, Meg? Absolutely. And Walker on Harrison right now. She has four fouls, so she's going to have to be careful in the way she helps. Great take, literally, yet again. She has 30 points, one possession game. Baylor's lead has nearly evaporated. It's a 10 count and another turnover. Credit Mark Kellogg, who was in the referee's ear on the far sideline. Remember, WBU just 12% from beyond the arc. Don't be shocked if you go inside. Quinterly a three. Incredible. It's a career high for J.J. Quinterly. 33 points against Baylor. Stunning stuff from West Virginia coming all the way back. Quinterly had made just one three-point field goal the entire game before that incredible shot. Now Baylor has to score to regain the lead. Inside, Blackwell can't finish. Whose ball is it? Since then, it's been 11 unanswered points from West Virginia to take the lead. A 10-point deficit that vanished in the span of about two minutes thanks to aggressive defense and efficient offense from the Mountaineers. This is a huge possession here. Baylor shows his zone look here. Perhaps the four seed of the Big 12 tournament will be decided in the next 23 seconds. Quinterly to Hemingway. Has to get it up. Shot clock violation. Here we go. Andrews with it. Off the screen. Kicking to Van Geitenbeek. Threw it away. 7.9 to go. Baylor will try to foul. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, you can't take much more time off the clock and allow West Virginia just to get it in. Winterly has lost it. Here's an open bucket for the lead. No good. But a foul. Edwards was fouled. Sorry, Walker was fouled on the way up. will shoot two free throws. That one ties it. And now Van Geitenbeek can give Baylor the lead. That, by the way, is Baylor's first point in more than three minutes. West Virginia does not have a timeout. Van Geitenbeek sinks both. Baylor leads by one. Here we go. West Virginia has to win it on this play. Harrison all the way. Rejected. And Baylor wins. 